Hi, everyone. Good afternoon again. Good to see you all. Nice uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed students. Uh, I do want to say quickly for C-SPAN that Young America's Foundation, in case you haven't heard of us, is an educational organization promoting conservatism uh, and our ideas on the nation's college campuses through lectures, publications, and conferences. During the last year, the foundation sponsored more than 600 le lectures, including addresses from Sarah Palin, Ann Coulter, Carl Rove, Ben Stein, Steve Forbes, and many others. In 1998, Young America's Foundation saved the Ronald, uh, Ronald Reagan's ranch, and with the Reagan Ranch Center in downtown Santa Barbara, uses it to educate young people about Reagan's ideas and how they apply to today. To learn more, please visit our website at Young America's Foundation uh, at yaf.org, or call 1-800-USA-1776. So right now we're going to go ahead and start a book panel. Now, young people, we're used to YouTube and the internet, and my big question is why read? And that's why I'm up here. I actually want to find out because honestly, I've had a hard time recently getting back into books and getting into intellectualism, but these guys are going to answer what to read and why we should read. And we actually have some great panelists to talk about it. Uh, we have Roger Reem, Chris Malagisi, and uh, Catherine Lopez. Well, I'll introduce them all individually, but generally I just wanted to say before we get into the panel that this is important to build a base for intellectualism and conservatism and actually have the ideas, have the, the true logic to defend your ideas and to... Uh, that have these battles on college campuses especially, you, you know, your professors are obviously versed in intellectualism. And a lot of that comes from, from books and from a long line of philosophy. And what we're, we're hoping to do with this panel is to show what you should read so you can actually take down the logic of your college professors when they are uh, up there pontificating. And uh, when you, if you ever get the chance to, to question them, you'll have something good to say. So our first speaker will be Roger Ream. He is the president of the Fund for American Studies. Reem was the founding staff member and vice president for the development of Citizens for a Sound Economy, which is an economic uh, policy organization in D.C. He served as a special assistant to two U.S. congressmen and the senior staff of the Foundation for Economic Education. He is the, uh, one of the founding members of the Frank S. Meyer Society. Maybe he'll be recommending one of Meyer's books, possibly. And uh, he currently serves as its secretary. Please, everyone, welcome the president for the, American Fu the Fund for American Studies, Roger Reem. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Uh, it's just great to see all of you here uh, for the Young America's Foundation Conference this summer. Uh, it really is a source of encouragement uh, to people like me who uh, came up uh, 35, 30, 35 years ago through Young Americans for Freedom, Young America's Foundation, uh, the Fund for American Studies, and other organizations were working on campus uh, in those dark old days. Uh, and uh, I know it's just as dark at times for you guys. So uh, just great that you're spending a week this summer. I have the highest admiration for Young America's Foundation. I've known Ron Robinson uh, for 35 years since uh, we worked in campus politics together and just have the greatest admiration for what they're doing with the Reagan Ranch and the, the programs like this they're sponsoring throughout the year around the country. Uh, so I hope you'll all stay very active with Young America's Foundation uh, during the coming academic year. Uh, it's it's a, a real pleasure to be here. I thought, uh, since I'm first, I might uh, begin by talking about why this panel is being held and, and, and why it's important to read books. Uh, they say that reading books is somewhat of a dying art uh, with all the competing uh, opportunities we have for our time. Uh, but. I think Young America's Foundation certainly recognizes the importance of, of uh, the canon of literature about America's founding ideas, about limited government, and about the free enterprise system by, by chairing this panel. By reading books, we really get a, we develop a philosophical framework. We develop those first principles uh, that enable us to evaluate public policy, uh, that enable us to make judgments about the things we encounter, ideas that come along. Uh, if we familiarize ourselves with the ideas of Jefferson and Madison and great economists like F.A. Hayek and Milton Friedman and Ludwig von Mises and others, uh, when we come across proposals, when we come across ideas that challenge us, uh, we can think about what it is those authors uh, might have thought about those ideas. It doesn't mean the conclusions we reach will always be the right conclusions. Uh, but we have that framework then to defend our beliefs when they're challenged. Uh, a political science professor at the University of Virginia, Jim Caesar, 
uh, wrote an interesting paper uh, just a few years ago about, the, he made a distinction between think tanks and policy organizations and other organizations on the conservative side of the spectrum versus those on the left. And it was an interesting distinction that's relevant here today, I think, because what Caesar said, if you go into the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, the American Enterprise Institute, any type of conservative or libertarian organization, you will see f uh, portraits or busts of the great thinkers who our ideas derive from, be it John Locke, Edmund Burke, Jefferson, Madison, Friedman, Hayek, von Mises, uh, and others. Uh, we have this, this great intellectual tradition upon which we base the proposals that we support today. If you go into a left-wing think tank, you don't find that. I mean, they don't have that great intellectual tradition. They might have, you know, what, Paul Krugman or Chris Matthews or <laughs> Maureen Dowd or maybe Rousseau or Marx, if they want to be honest, but uh, they generally don't. Uh, so it's, it's very important for us to look back at those first principles, those foundations, those ideas. Uh, and it's been very important in my own intellectual development. I would, my first piece of advice to you is to become very familiar with our founding ideas. You can go to the original thinkers. You know, you certainly, unlike probably, unfortunately, most Americans read the Declaration of Independence, read the Constitution. Uh, they're just important things in there. When Jefferson writes in the Declaration of Independence that one of his complaints against England and George III was that he had sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. Uh, Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, very relevant today. Uh, in the Constitution, you know, you, got, you have to know the Tenth Amendment. And that uh, in Article I, Section 8, Congress is only d given about 20 powers. Uh, the rest are left to the states or to the people. Uh, so those are things that's important for conservatives to be aware of. Uh, the Federalist Papers is a great source. Uh, Federalist 10 on how to protect minority rights in a majoritarian system. The Anti-Federalist Arguments are also very important uh, for conservatives to know. And the first principles that are drawn from John Locke, David Hume, Adam Smith, uh, very important, I think, to go back to those original sources to get a firm grounding for our beliefs. I also recommend the writings of people like David McCullough, uh, David Hackett Fisher, Joseph Ellis, who write about the founding period. They're historians who really know how to write and bring history alive. Uh, and, and those books have been bestsellers, thankfully, in our country. So uh, those I recommend. Now for me, uh, when I was in my formative student years, uh, I came across a book called The Law by Frederick Bastiat. Have any of you read that? It looks like maybe 10, maybe 5% of you at most. I highly recommend the book The Law uh, by Frederick Bastiat, a French uh, statesman and, 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 and writer. It was published in France in the middle of the 19th century. Don't hold that against him. And, uh, yeah, don't hold that against him. Uh, <laughs> countering the ideas of, uh, of socialists in, in France at that time. Uh, and it's such a clear argument for freedom and limited government based on both moral principles, the principles of justice, that it's a must read, I think, for a young conservative. Uh, you can get it from FEE.org, the Foundation for Economic Education in Irvington, New York. FEE.org, they've kept it in print for well over 50, 60 years. Uh, in there, he talks, Bastiat in there talks about how our language has become perverted. And he could be writing about policy today. He writes about the idea of legal plunder of government using uh, its means for things that are not appropriate. And I'll just share a, a, a paragraph. See if the law takes from some persons what belongs to them and gives it to other persons to whom it does not belong. See if the law benefits one citizen at the expense of another by doing what that citizen himself cannot do without committing a crime. Legal pun plunder can be committed in an infinite number of ways. Tariffs, protection, benefits, subsidies, progressive taxation, minimum wages, relief, free credit, and so on. Uh, it's, it's just a great, it'll, it'll really ground your beliefs. Frederick Bastiat's The Law. Another favorite of mine is a book by Tom Sowell, A Conflict of Visions. You really can't go wrong reading